Competitive Fortnite is growing faster than ever, and with so much change comes so much expectations. The skill gap is on an ever increase, and in order to keep up with it, we need to adapt. Fortunately, players all around the world are learning new metas and finding more creative ways to get an edge over everyone else. This is happening faster now as the new Chapter 2 update has caused a surge in the player base, meaning that even more people than before are grinding Fortnite to get better. In order to keep up with the increasing skill gap, it is vital to know the best tips and tricks. To help you guys dominate the community and hold controller players' places as some of the best in the game, we've created this video which features 5 insanely useful tips for controller that will make you much better than ever before. Before we get into it, if you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite, then click the link below to go to ProGuides.com, where you can play with the best players in the world by just clicking a button. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you'll get a a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com. Also, a lot of you guys were asking for a creator code, so we went ahead and made one. Be sure to use code ProGuides in the item shop when doing any kind of purchase to support your friendly ProGuides Fortnite team. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support. We strive to bring you the best content available. Alright, with all that being said, let's get into the video. So let's hop right in. With the introduction of Classic Arena Mode, we saw a cap on the amount of materials you can carry. This was set to 500 for each material, meaning that you can only carry 1500 materials. Although not necessarily little, this split the old material cap in half, therefore giving you guys less mats to work with. Being able to build freely without worry of your materials then became less of a reality. Conserving materials on the other hand is becoming more and more important. This causes a big problem. A lot of times you're going to need to use up a lot of materials in order to play effectively, especially with the addition of the all new weapons that can burn through walls, such as the relatively new SMG in Chapter 2 and the buff in Rocket Launcher spawns. So how do we combat this? We can't build less, but we have less materials. Well, we have a solution for you. One of the most useful building maneuvers for retaking high ground is the classic 90. However, 90s tend to waste a lot of materials, making them hard to crank without wasting a load of mats. High ground is also very important in competitive play. In one of our recent videos, we talked about how high ground can be the difference maker between earning placement points and returning to the lobby. Thankfully, by watching some of the pros, we recognize something very interesting. Tifu is known for being one of the best players in the world. He can compete against the best and do well. He's also excellent when it comes to positioning and maintaining the high ground towards the end game. Here's what he does. Tifu uses only floors and ramps to do his 90s. What this does is it saves him up to 40 materials when he's cranking out his 90s. The way you do this is by performing a normal 90 without using any walls. It's very effective as you will start getting used to not hitting the wall on your side as it won't be there anymore. Since there's no wall for you to hit, you won't lose any speed as you crank your 90s. Another reason is because he doesn't use the walls where it's unnecessary. Notice how we said unnecessary. This is because Tifu doesn't always use this strategy for cranking 90s. The reason players use walls when 90ing is to provide protection as they build up. Tifu uses the half 90 strategy to gain high ground when he knows there's not too many people looking at him. This will get him height very quickly without wasting many materials. The half 90 method works great for controller players because it's a relatively easier way of doing 90s. You don't have to move your sight as much as you would with normal 90s which will make it easier for you to aim. Using walls is necessary at times though, so make sure you're using this trick with lots of thought and good decision making. We also suggest you hop into a creative lobby and practice the new method in order to master it. Aiming on controller is insanely important for performing well. Without hitting your shots, you've given up a major aspect of true controller skill. Along with aiming comes dead zones. Dead zones are the radius at which your controller's analog stick stops being reactive to movement. We can guess that a large majority of you guys watching this video are using a relatively older controller that's been in use for at least 3 months. By now, there's a good chance that your right analog stick has started to wear out. What this causes is stick drift. Stick drift is where your analog stick slightly leans to one side over another, causing your Fortnite character to look around when you aren't even touching the controller. This is where dead zones come in handy. The thing is, however, dead zones can actually impact your aiming a lot, meaning that finding the perfect dead zones for your controller is a must for all players. To start, hop into a creative lobby and set your dead zone to zero. Move your analog stick around and then set your controller down to see if your aim moves on its own. If it does, it's a sign that you need to up your dead zones. 
Now from here, put your dead zone exactly one up and then once again move your analog stick around and set down the controller. Observe again to see if there's any movement. You're going to want to repeat these steps until you find the lowest dead zone possible that allows for no drift. The reason for this is because the lower your dead zone is, the larger the range of motion you have is, meaning that you can use more of your analog stick to aim. This makes you much more accurate and can improve your controller aim greatly over time. Having your dead zones high is never a good thing and we're highly against it. As for your left analog stick, it's important to have it low as well. This is because controller movement is superior to keyboard and mouse and every other platform. Controllers provide 360 degree movements while keyboard and mouse players only have 8 directional. This is a huge advantage that can help greatly in build fights and shootouts. But the left analog stick tends to wear down less since you're not using it as aggressively and frequently as you would your right. Also, if you happen to be on a new controller, set both dead zones to zero and change your dead zones whenever you notice that your controller is developing a drift. In summary, be sure to fine tune your dead zones and make sure that they're optimal for your specific controller. Oftentimes, it can be a bit harder to take walls when you're on controller. This is because of the trigger that presses down and takes a bit to return back to its resting state. Taking walls, however, is insanely important when it comes to dominating in Fortnite. Being able to take walls faster than the other opponent while having the same ping comes down to skill. And at times, taking a wall faster even if you have higher ping could still get you the win. And at times, taking a walk faster even if you have higher ping could still get you the win. So here's an advanced trick to make it easier. Most players pickaxe an opponent's wall and try to time their wall placement perfectly. This can be really hard when it comes to timing because the pickaxe swing isn't instant. If you think about it, it takes about half a second for your pickaxe to actually hit the target after you click the swing button. This is natural and is a game mechanic, but can make taking walls harder. Our workaround solves this problem and gives you an awesome and insane way to take walls. The way this works is you want to use your pickaxe to make their wall weak. Get it as close to breakable as possible and then switch to an SMG. Now, with your SMG, shoot until the wall is once again as close to breakable as possible, but don't break it. Finally, switch off to whatever shotgun you're using, whether it's a pump or a tactical. This step is the most important. What you guys want to do is shoot the wall while switching to build mode and holding down the place build button almost instantly. You want to be pressing all these buttons at almost the exact same time. The reason this works so well is because the shotgun shot is instantaneous and doesn't need perfect timing to work. All you have to do is master the muscle memory of pressing all of these buttons at once. It's even better for controller players who have a slight pause in between each trigger pump, especially if it's players who do not have trigger stops. Make sure you practice this move in creative as it will help you greatly with taking enemy walls. Editing is another major aspect of Fortnite that requires great speed and accuracy. However, it is oftentimes overlooked and not done correctly. The thing with editing is that it can be in multiple different ways. You can be a slow and accurate editor who takes their take but doesn't choke or make mistakes in their edits, or you can be a very spastic editor that spurts out random edits in lightning fast speeds. The perfect editor, however, does none of these. Editing on controller is a skill that can be learned quite simply. It's all about muscle memory. You want your edits to be as fast as possible, but you also don't want to be randomly throwing out edits and making mistakes where you don't make the edit intended. What you need to start doing is getting into creative lobbies or edit courses where you practice specific editing maneuvers like the top row off edit or the corner piece and start off slow. Learn the muscle memory and get used to getting it down. Once you've done a specific edit correctly five times in a row, you can now up the speed at which you're doing it and practice doing it faster. A perfect edit would be one that is done in under half a second. Just to clarify, you want to be able to do the whole edit and confirm it under this time. Almost all the pros can do this whether they're on controller or keyboard and mouse. Editing fast can be very tricky towards opponents and can give you the edge that you need to dominate in build fights. In the new chapter of Fortnite, you now have a variety of ways to aim in Fortnite. You can use the old aiming system or the new one. The new advanced aiming allows you to control your acceleration and switch between linear and exponential aiming. However, the old aiming style, which pretty much everyone was used to, is still there. A lot of people didn't know about this, but you can actually switch back to the old aim assist, which allows you to get a flick towards the opponent every time you press in left trigger. This can be done by going into the new sensitivity tab and scrolling all the way down until you find use legacy look controllers, then switch this to on. This will gray out the entire new sensitivity tab and will open up the old one for use. What's great about the old sensitivity is how the left trigger aim assist works, and the fact that the majority of controller players are most comfortable using it. 
However, we are a good few days into the new chapter, and a good number of people are using the new advanced aim. Therefore, staying on it may be the better idea for some of you. What's important is that you guys test both out and find which one works best for you. Even if you were more used to the older aiming system, the new one might work better for you. So be sure to try both out and see which one works best. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below what you thought and what you'd like to see next. We strive to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Once again, it's your host, Dan. You can find me at, at Daniel Ammerman, and we'll see you in the next one.